Okay, so let's take a look at Big GAN. Um, so inside a runway, uh, the most popular sort of image generation model is StyleGAN. That's because you can train your own StyleGAN model, um, you know, upload your own data, train your own model. Uh, Big GAN is sort of like StyleGAN, except um, it's pretty much not trainable. Like there are people who are training their own Big GAN models, but um, it's much much harder. Um, and we'll look at the reason why that is, uh, but let's take a look at how to actually like use the model that's inside of uh, Runway already and look at the pre-trained model. Um, so we'll just search up here, Big GAN. Um, there is Big Buy GAN, which is a different model. I'll talk about that uh, in a different video. We want Big GAN, so uh, let's learn more about this. Um, so the description of Big GAN is generate images from 1,000 categories. And the categories part is the, is the important thing here. So Style GAN tends to produce all images within the same cat category, right? So um, all Brutalist architecture, all Simpsons characters, all faces. Um, Big GAN's difference is that it uses categories, and it can generate from a bunch of different categories. So if you look at this gallery image here, you've got wolves, mushrooms, bubbles, coffee, rockets, dogs, you know, whatever. So this is categories. Um, and if you're interested, uh, the paper here is actually really good. It is very, very helpful to read this paper. Um, this is trained on a uh, data set called ImageNet. ImageNet is one of the more popular data, data sets for images, um, in part because of these categories. It's, you know, I think it's something like 100,000 images that have been uh, scraped from the internet and categorized according to a thousand different uh, samples or like different category areas. Um, so this is important to know that like what you're going to do here is you're going to pick a category and then you're going to be able to generate images from that category. So let's go ahead and add this to my workspace. And let's get this running. Um, and if you've used uh, StyleGAN before, I've watched any of my videos on how vector, the vector grid works, um, this is pretty similar. So what you're going to do over here is um, you'll see like this grid pops up, it's very similar to StyleGAN. Uh, the big difference here is over here on the, the right hand side is your inference options of categories. Um, and you'll see in here that there are any number of categories. Um, a lot of these tend to be uh, animals. Um, you know, ImageNet has a lot of different categories around, around animals. Um, so I don't know what a tench or a tinka tinka is. Um, I guess it's maybe some sort of stingray or fish looking thing. Um, but you'll see here, like, as I've chosen this category, it's sharing images. Now let's maybe go through this list and pick something different. Let's pick, uh, let's pick, um, let's pick a kite. I don't know if that's actually the object of a kite or something. Looks like it's more of a bird kite. Let's do vulture then. Um, so here you'll see we have a bunch of images of vultures. Um, you'll see, you know, in many of these categories, there aren't a lot of images for each of these categories. So these images tend to be pretty similar, right? So uh, this one's a little bit more on green grass, this one's on brown grass, but they're pretty similar. Um, now again, similar to vector inputs in other places, there's a thing called sampling distance. If you crank this up, you will get uh, a wider range of images, right? So now you're seeing we're getting, I don't know if it's actually a vulture, it looks more like an eagle or something, but um, you're seeing more diversity, right? Whereas if you crank it down, you'll see a lot of pretty similar images. So it's like, if you're looking to just sort of find some images you like, maybe choose a really high range. Um, so that looks like a good sort of birdish thing there. Um, and then when you are looking maybe for like, I like this one, but I don't like the beak shape or something, you can select it and then you can sort of uh, make the size smaller. And you can sort of see like, okay, there's one with maybe a little bit more detail, um, you know, different renderings of each of these birds. So that's sort of how I would recommend using uh, the sampling options. Now, um, if we keep looking here through categories, you'll see a lot of these are animals, um, but I bet if we scroll all the way down here, actually it looks like many of these are animals. I did see pizza, so let's actually search for pizza. And you'll see a rather strange looking pizza, but it is a pizza nonetheless. Um, let's crank the sampling distance up. Uh, and if you want to regenerate your grid, you can click this button here. This is regenerate grid. And then we'll get some different pizzas. Let's see, in general, they look pretty si all pretty similar. They're all like a mishmash of like a little bit of pepperoni, a little bit of sausage, and a little tomato. 
Um, some are uglier than the others. Uh, now again, if you want to download one of these, you just click this button here and then I'll save out the image for you. If you want to download the vector, um, and we'll talk about this in future classes or in other videos where we're using P5.js to manipulate these, you can click Sample Save Vector, um, and this is going to save a file onto your computer that is really a vector. So let's talk about what this output is. Um, so similar to StyleGAN, um, there is a vector option. If you come over here, you can see um, the output here is 128 float values. So if you've looked at StyleGAN, you know StyleGAN is 512, Big GAN is 128, but the addition is that instead of, so StyleGAN has the Z uh, truncation value, um, Big GAN doesn't have a truncation value in this model, but it does have a category. So if you were to use this with, um, with P5.js, you need to pass a category in as well. Those categories are what's listed here, right? Um, so uh, pretty similar to StyleGAN, but because of the categories, it changes things a little bit different. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to talk about with uh, Big GAN? You can do interpolation videos with these. In fact, let's see if this allows you to do, yeah, so you can do a latent walk directly out of uh, the export um, of Big GAN. Uh, again, you'll want to choose sort of a, a model here um, or a category here. Um, let's, I, want, I really wish Drake was actually Drake, but instead it's going to be an animal, I assume. Um, Say so your number of keyframes, um, seconds between keyframes, and how long, and your video rate. So you can export out videos from this. Um, again, this is going to sort of generate a random uh, set of keyframes and then do interpolation between them. Um, if you want to manage that more uh, or have more control over it, you'll probably need to use something like P5.js. So uh, this is pretty similar to StyleGAN, except for the uh, change of categories versus uh, a truncation value. Um, that's pretty much it for walking through the big GAN model. Um, later we'll look at how to use Big BigBigAm, which sort of uh, uses the BigGAM model as a way to input your own images and find the closest representation inside of BigGAM. Um, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, uh, and thank you.